to another episode of Pink Confinement. And today we got Miss Stacy in the building. Miss Stacy, what's going on? Hey, girl. I love you guys. Thank you. <laughs> you know. Okay. Yes. Then. Yes. Let's do this. So, y'all already know we back in New Jersey. Shout out to my girl, Sawara. You know what I'm saying? Giving that hospitality. We in Nibbles just smoking, yes. doing the damn thing. Oh, <laughs> all right, Miss Stacy. So you are know how this go. So give us a background about how you grew up. Okay, first and foremost, I had a beautiful childhood. Mother was a nurse, raised us. You no, know, beautiful, just beautiful. Always, as kids, mother was a nurse. Father was just everything. My family was look. Mm, I'm nervous, guys. Wait a minute. I am fucking nervous. Okay, take your time. Mm. Take your time. I'm nervous. This is the first time. No, but anyway, I had a beautiful childhood. You know, my mother was a nurse, raised us six kids by herself. Um, wonderful childhood. Only time I had a problem is when my mom died. Mm. So was the father in the household? Always, yes. My so mother was married. I always had all my siblings. I mean, we had the best childhood. We didn't want or need anything. Okay, so your dad was the actual dad, like the man of the house. He didn't let your mama do all the work and he just stayed no, there free load. my mother was married. Okay. So okay. with mother and father, yes. Okay, then. So how was it growing up in a household with all those siblings? Oh, shit, it was hell. I mean, I had, I'm the baby. So I'm the, the I'm the baby of the family. So all the love, you know, I was, my mother always tended me. All my other sisters and brothers, I mean, they tend to me. As far as and fighting and all that, normal shit. Okay. But as far as child, I had a beautiful, no complaints. Was y'all raised up in the church? Yes. Okay. So how many days out of the week did you have to go to the church? We went every Sunday and then on Wednesdays. Okay. For Bible study. Okay. We was raised in the church, yes. Okay. So what religion was that? Um, Baptist. Baptist. Okay. So when did you start getting in trouble? Um, my mother died. My mother had congestive heart failure. I was 35 from 18 to 35. Always had my own place. Took care of all my children. But when my mom died, when I was 35 in 1999, my life went to hell. I fell straight into my addiction. I never did crack, never did drugs, never lived in prostitution. I never had that life. When she took her last breath, that's when I died. And what age was that? I was 35. So you never did no drugs, never, never prostitution never. until my mother died. So that like at that age, like what? Like, I don't even know how to explain it. I'm gonna tell you when she died, I fell straight into the crack addiction. Prostitution, drugs, anything that I can die, that's what I wanted to do. I never did drugs. It just like I just went fell downhill. I'm 57 today. From 35, I went to prison. I did Edna Man. I went down in 2099. Went 2002. Came home. Went back again. Criminal justice. Then I went back in 2004. My life was fucked up. When she died, that's all I just wanted to die. I did everything I could to try to kill me on this earth, mm. but I couldn't die. God said I, it wasn't time. I wasn't I'm supposed to be here. And yeah. I, that's where I can go. Like, thank you for letting me talk about this because it's something in me. I changed. I, I went through it. Prostitution, selling my ass, doing drugs, stealing, shopping, everything that was of the devil of this world, I did because I wanted to die. I loved myself. Mm. I went to prison. I was, they sexually harassed us, abused us, disrespected us. I didn't care. I didn't care. I really didn't care because I didn't have no life. Mm. When my mom died, everything else died. Mm. I mean, my siblings was there. They was, but we all separated. It was just about me. I'm the only one out of my siblings that suffered. We all went through our own hell, but I'm the one that went through prison. I'm the one that had to be downgraded. I'm the one that's a system, but it's okay because that was my destiny. Okay, okay. So you said that you had you have children, right? Yes, I have three children. I have a 38-year-old, I have a 35-year-old, and I have a 34-year-old son. I have eight grandchildren, 
and one great grand. Okay, so how did that affect them when you know you was thirty five and you turned to the streets and you went you know, yes. the whole time? How did that affect them? I had them? what I did. I had sent three, all three of my children to live with their father. Then my mother had made that arrangement because she knew I was going to fall apart. Mm. So what I did, I sent them to live with their dad because I didn't want the state to take them. So with my 15-year-old daughter, I had a 15, her name is Ellen at the time. Sarah was 12, she's 35, and my son Ryan, he's 34, he was 11. They went with their father, but my 15-year-old came back. She didn't want to leave me out there. Mm. Their life, and she lived in life with me. She lived the drug addiction. She, she was the mother. She became the mother and I became the child. All I did was provide the money. I was tricking. I was getting in and out of cars, mm -hmm. tricking. She would come to me, Mom, you know, going to school. It wasn't in there. I wasn't there. But she still was willing to be there with me as a mother, as my child. To this day, me and my daughter are best friends. She lived a tr struggle. She didn't want to go with her father. Mm -hmm. I needed her to be with them. But she needed to be with me. And we, when I caught my charge in 99 and 2000, that's when she went back to take care. She became a mother mm -hmm. of my two children, of her siblings. She had no resentment towards you? None. It was, a, I, I went through a lot, yes. Coming out of recovery, coming back in, it was, I had to be on the hot seat a lot of times, yes. It was a lot of resentment, it was a lot of hate, a lot of bitterness, rage. Because of the addiction, I couldn't get it, but they still loved me. But it was still, I had to, I had to win their love back. Mm, mm. So, when you started the crack addiction, did you know where to go to get it? It was there. It was there. My nephew, seller, family members. It so was you, just, yeah. How much, what, how much did you hit the first time? Man, I just dropped the whole 20 in there. I didn't know. I didn't never did it. I just seen people do it. So I thought that, but when I first hit it the first time, I didn't know how to do it. So it, whoever, when I was around, they really cussed me out because they said I was wasted. But then when <laughs> I got the, when I wait, <laughs> now when I got the pull and I knew how to do it, I was in like them because that was the best high. How long was you high? Uh, the first time yeah, I was high for, time. for a long time. And then after that, after the first hit, it's over. It only lasts two minutes after that, and you're running, running, running. So you chasing the high, the first high. Oh, definitely. So what does it make? What does it make you feel like? I don't want to smoke crack. I'm just asking. Like, <laughs> what did it? What did it make me feel yeah, like? It made yeah, me feel, feel like. good. Like oh, sensuous. It made me feel good. It loved me. I didn't have this. Is what I wanted. I loved the way it made me feel. It made me feel good. Like yes, mm -hmm. nobody else loves you. You don't need your kids. You don't need your family. You only need me. Wow. Okay. So how did you start the prostitution? Did you do that to feed your habit? No. I, it, yes, basically. The addiction came with the, the job comes with the addiction. Okay. So was there a lot of dope boys sleeping with you? No, I never, no, not no dope boys. I mean, personally, no disrespect, but I like the white men. Mm -hmm. That was my preference. What? Why? They must have the money. That's it. It was all about the money. It wasn't no love. I don't want to mess with no African American. I didn't. I never messed with. I mess outside the race. Why? Because a white man's going to pay me. Mm. A black man only want to give me half. I don't have time for that because I need my drugs and I need money. Mm. So it was about. I don't. I never mess with a black man. Ever. Straight business. Straight business. And it was no love. Uh uh uh. It. it my, <laughs> right. But it was always what? money. It was always my money up front. Yeah. So it was waiting for my time and paid it. Okay, okay. So what were the prices? How did you come up the price? And did you have some loyal tricks? I just came up with the price. How hoes don't get paid, pros didn't. Oh, oh wait, hold on now. Hold on now. Profile. She said hoes don't get paid. Pros do. Okay. So, so Miss Stacy, was you a pro? I was a pro. Oh. <laughs> you can call. You can call me. A, you can call me a madam. Put it like that. Okay. Y'all heard Miss Stacy said yes. she's running. She. I was coming from out of Cumberland County. That's where my addiction was when my mom died. I lived in Cumberland County. Okay. And so, ain't nothing but Clanville up there. That's what they say. Okay. But don't Clanville sure love this black me? Okay. They love me. <laughs> And I was grade A. Y'all heard me. Grade A. Grade A. Okay. Yeah. So 
sure that's DA choice. <laughs> for sure. For sure. So, so Miss Stacy, so when you start getting still and what you boosting and stuff? No, I never did that. Just never tricking. Did. That's it. Okay. All I did is trick. Okay. Okay. That's it. Then. I ain't nobody trying to I ain't trying to go to fed jail fast. I know I'm going to go because I don't know if if this is a cop, I don't know if it's entrapment. I didn't get it there. As long as you gave me that money. So okay. what shocked if you're going to jail because cops come. No. I never did that. Okay then. Okay then. So how much was your addiction a day you would say? Hundred dollars a day. That's it? Not a hundred dollars. I'm talking about a hundred dollars in the morning. They called me on the block and he can tell you. My, I'm not hundred dollar girl. I'm not coming to no block for no ten or no five. Oh, oh, okay. So it's straight off. Out straight. The I say within a day when I wake up, just to wake up. I say within a day. I see, I see maybe three, four hundred. Cause I'm buying bulk. I'm okay. not going to the block and they get me ten. I know ten ain't gonna be enough. I'm buying thirty at the top. I'm gonna spend three hundred dollars worth. Cause that means I'm not coming outside. Cause I never was a runner. You know, mm -hmm. I smoke it, I get it. I'm not going to say I wasn't running around the house. Mm -hmm. But as far as what I'm going to keep going outside for, if I'm not, I'm not, I was never that type. No, in and out, in and out. Okay, I'm getting okay. three, four hundred dollars and I'm going to smoke. Now y'all can come on over, but I'm not running now after that's going, that's going to be a couple days. Now I'm going back outside. Okay, okay. So it wasn't like no, you got the girls that's how I trick them back to back $20. No, I'm not doing all that. That's a waste of my time. That's what hoes is for. <laughs> they run around for a couple of hours. I'm not doing all that. I need you to dig deep in their pocket so okay. I can get my addiction right. Because okay. I had a, that was the addiction. Coke and crack is a high addiction. Mm. You're going to pay a white man's price. So guess what? If you're going to do it, my sister always said, don't half step it. Go all the way. Yeah. Big fans. Big fans. Okay. Okay. So when you got to prison, how was it? The life for you in prison? Oh, my goodness. And what were your charges? First charge I had, I had a, um, I tricked a minor in my prostitution. So I wear a Megas Law charge now, right now. But as God is good, that's going to be dismissed. As so can you is. explain that charge? Cause um, I, I don't understand. I had sex with a minor. Did you know that was a minor? No, I did not. Okay. Okay. I didn't know it was a minor. I was in, it was a, a big drug bust coming out of Camden County and I was in it. It was already a sting going on like six months prior. Oh, okay. So when I moved in with my sister, now I'm trying to get my life together now. I done left the addiction. My 15-year-old daughter's with me. Now I'm trying to change, so mm -hmm. I'm going to my sister's house. I'm leaving my old behaviors, old attitudes, and old area. So I'm trying to take my daughter into another area to try to change. Okay. But the addiction was still there, but not as bad. Okay. So when I went to move with my sister... These people was already under secret indictment. I don't know. I'm not looking mm -hmm. at the age. I'm at the addiction. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at the addiction. It is what it is, and I tricked him, yes. So do you got arrested as a sex offender? Yes. How does that make you feel? How did it make me feel at the time? Mm -hmm. I felt some type of way. I felt sad because it, I didn't know he was a child. I didn't know he was 16. Mm -hmm. I didn't know. I didn't didn't know he looked like a grown man. So once I realized what it was, but when I went to court, he was charged also because he served undercover cop. But knowing that the age, I would have did the same thing. I was, mm. so I don't blame him. So did somebody pay for you for him or did he pay for you for he, himself? He gave me drugs for the addiction. Oh, okay. But how the truth, my sister, was the star witness for the project because at that time Wait, what your sister yes like against you or yes she read it yes oh what yes that's the truth that after now i didn't know at the time it was a whole complex not over 50 people that got in this raid but everybody got everybody was in a raid but if a person had warrants and somebody say because at the time of my charge, it wasn't. It, it, in my heart, I forgave her because I had to for, in order for me to get better. But it came to her, you got six wars. What are you going to do? Throw me under the bus. And that's what she did. Because he didn't know. She told him that by he should go get tested because she wanted drugs. We're all in addiction. So by her wanting drugs 
and he's telling her no, so she told do something up. Well, you need to go get tested because I think my sister has AIDS. No. Uh, Did we talk to him? Yes. I know we're here. Why why do you talk to her? I... Because you know why? Because forgiveness is for me. It's not for her. Because right now I see how her life is all messed up. She would never get it because forgiveness. Not for a long time. I always forgave her because today who I am. Mm -hmm. And still at the end of the day, it's my sister. She has to live with that, not me. I made peace with my maker. She has to. Mm. So so how is her life now? Like, is it still no, downhill? It's downhill. She's at rock bottom. That's her karma. Yeah. She's in a relationship where it's hate. I just left her, yes. So I'm okay. I, it's called forgiveness. Is the relationship the same? Before her telling. Never was the same. It's always like, it seemed like she'll say, stab me in my back and save me too. I can, she'll stab me, kill me, and then resuscitate me. So it's like that relationship with her. Now, I, I went to prison. Yeah. Now, I went to prison. Now, let me tell you something. My brother, I know this. You would have old shit stone pinky pink. We know that. It would have been. Fuck you, nigga, nigga. Yeah. <laughs> I ain't gonna talk to him. Period. We could have been at my mama house and I seen all like twisted nigga. Fuck nigga. I ain't nah. I ain't been talking to you, old oh, nigga. And nah, I don't care. He my brother. Nah, I ain't, nah. I, I can't do it. I can't do it. Well, I guess her her you know her karma is waking up every day still in the same situation. Yes, yes, yeah. that's yeah. what it is. Every day she will never be happy. Okay. Make, does it make me happy? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I was talking about. Yes, it does. Okay. So while you was in prison, was you able to make stove? How life was for you while you was locked up? That's good for me. Well, why? A girlfriend in them. You know why it was good for me? Because the day when I got locked up, uh -huh. that night, a couple of days before then, with me, it was me and a white girl. And we used to run that. We used to run that strip. Mm -hmm. And every night we would go, nobody else, you see that girl, nobody else would go out there. Every and every night she said, Stacey, you want to go this night? I said, no. Instead of me going, I court my charge. The night I court my charge, I'm tricking him. That's when they had the Atlantic City um, murders. Remember they kept having them? Oh, know. yeah, yeah. That's when I court my Megan's Law charge. That's oh, when wow. I court my charge. Okay, That's so when they safe. found, by me, I didn't go out that night. The next day they found her dead. Wow. She was on Atlantic City Beach. If I would have went, I would have died. But God placed me in that charge. Yeah, yeah, so you got saved. Okay. So by me being in prison, I was confined here. I learned how to, I tried, to, tried I tried. It didn't work then. Mm -hmm. I just learned how to survive, that's it. It was survival, that's it. Was you making commissary? Oh yes. I mean, my family was there, commissary, books. I had everything I needed, but I, I didn't have that. I couldn't get it. It was still strangled. Was you messing with any females while you was in there? Oh, yeah. I did have a wife. I ain't going to lie. <laughs> oh, yeah. And she's still there. She got 30 years. She went back. She got a body. So, mm, yeah. <laughs> Miss Stacey, you gotta make Miss Stacey a little tingly. We want me to. Yeah. Now we know you. You know you prefer the white man with the trick. Was she a white lady? Or oh no, she was black. Oh okay. Mm. Okay, so you, you got the dark meat this time. Yes. 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 Right. yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. I had to get a black one. Yes. Okay. So Miss Stacey, you are I know. You say you fought with me, Kapab. You are I know. Did you eat that pussy? Oh no 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 no. <laughs> Oh no, they gonna do me. They they ain't me. Lick. I be like, yes, yes, of course. Oh no, 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 no. They was munching on this for a burger now. Miss Stacy, did you look at the pussy? Oh no, no. Look, I mean, it ain't nothing wrong with looking at it. It ain't nothing wrong with touching it either. But as far as Miss Stacy, oh no, I ain't going down that far. Now I might go like that. And say now, but I was always the receiver. Oh, so you you a pillow princess? Yes, I like that. Yes. She said she yes. was a Yes. Shit. Yes. She was spread did eagle. With, did you mess with any other officers while you was in there? And excuse me. Oh no. Well, they. I mean, no. I had some cuties, but as far as touching up. Okay. Okay. Was you receiving any contraband while you was in there? 
No. Did you go to church while you was in there? Yes. Okay, so why did you go to church when there? Besides you growing up in the... In because the at that time, I was really trying to get my life together now. It was time to stop playing and start seeking spiritual awakening. Okay, so why do you feel that people, when they get locked up, they all of a sudden, like, turn to God or want to find a higher power to believe in, in your opinion? Well, me personally, at that time in my life, I didn't believe, I didn't, when my mom died, I didn't believe in anything. I didn't have any hope. I knew Jesus because I was raised in him, but I stepped away. I couldn't find me, so I couldn't find nobody. So being in prison, turning to him is looking into myself. I had to start looking into self. So I see everything, everything I see, I can't believe. So why not try what I can't say? So that's what I did. I just start trusting, opening up a little bit. I was scared. Okay, so was you mistreated by any of the officers while you was locked up? Hell yeah. Can you uh, give a... Man, they want to talk about going on your wing, pushing us and stuff like that. Yes. Very disrespect. I use it. Yes, cussing out all the time. Yes. Did, Especially... they, did they talk to you like dogs? Yes. They talked to us, belittle us, to go in your room. Oh, oh, oh. I need a man. Self and we're thinking they're talking about people. Talking about us, disrespecting us, because we're not, a lot of us can't have sex. And they're telling them, we need a man, we need dick up in them, yes. <laughs> Very disrespectful. I was in the man correctional facility, so yes, that is the worst prison there is. Okay, so did you, did you take more abuse from the female or the male officers? Male officers. Male versus the female? Yes. Mm. So was you sexually harassed while you was yes. in there? Yes, yes. Yes, my breast is big. Oh, you got a fat ass going through the metal detectors. Very disrespectful. Yes, I was there on the Edna Man Correctional Facility lawsuit. I got a check for okay. the sexual harassment. Yes, okay. I fell under tier one. Okay. So, how did they become an under investigation? To your knowledge, if you know, did y'all have cell phones in there? Did yeah. people reach out to their family and tell them what was going on? I'm pretty sure that is because a lot of people is getting pregnant. Oh. Incarcerate. They was getting pregnant. It was automatically going to come out because you got, we're locked up. You got women in there 20 years. How are you pregnant? Yeah. So that's how I believe it came out. Okay, okay, okay. So what do, have any of their officers been, uh, been sentenced? Yes. I think it was like six of them. How much time did they get? Um, I'm not sure. I know they got years. How they got much time a, do you think that they should have got? They should have got time, well, a long time. They got women that's praying. They're, they're supposed to protect us. Mm -hmm. They're here. They're supposed to be our security. We're supposed to be able to trust them. Even though we're convicts, still, so what? We're still supposed to be safe. I feel like they should get time according to their charges. Do you think 20 years is suffice? Yes. What if somebody got 10 years? That would be fine, too, as long as they can see how we got felt. Okay. We're all on the other side. Switch. Don't never think you're too better because you can be in our position and look at them now. Okay. Okay. What do you think they should do with the facility? Do you think they should shut it down? It's a shutdown. Well, and the man correction facility, I thought it's out there. Mike um, just went into law and for, uh, uh, she's going to be a correctional officer. She went today to uh, the new uh, mountainside. Okay. She's okay. going into, she's already into it. And, um, uh, her goal is to want to be a warden of Edna Man Correctional Facility. Okay, then. Okay, then. So yes. I'm afraid that that happens? Yes. Okay. So do you feel that even though the females, they locked up and they're convicts, that they should be treated as human beings? You know, I know it's a lot of people like, well, them bitches did this. It don't matter how they treat it enough. Do you feel that they should be treated like human beings? Yes. I feel as though we should be treated like that. We're equal. We committed our crimes. Yes. And now we're doing the time. So we already paid the penalty. So why can't we still be treated? Because when we come out in society, we have to re-entry re program. So why not? Why can't we be treated like that when we inside? Yes. Okay. Why do you feel a lot of the officers um, treat the inmates, the females bad, talk to them crazy? Majority of them are men. For real? Ma majority in Edna Man correct wasn't too many females. So in New Jersey, I don't feel as though it should be men officers working in the women's prisons. Who was conducting y'all strip searches? Um, the men. What? They have a couple females, 
but they're they're gay anyway. They're doing the same thing. So when they pat us down, they're literally patting us down. Chopping the pill. Yes. What? That's insane. That's in New Jersey. We're in New Jersey now. And the man correction facility, they're shutting it down because of all the sexual harassment. But now they moved the women to Mountain View. Mm -hmm. To the Annandale. It's the old registered sex offenders prison. Mm. Do you feel that the female's prison should be just only females working there? Yes. What you think, say? I mean, you know, being in a female facility, you have a lot of males that work there, but they normally do like outside grounds. They don't normally don't do the strip searches in the dorms. Like a lot of states have stopped it. Like, I'm right? Yeah, they stopped it. Yes. On the having males work in female dorms, they shouldn't be working female. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's it. Should be male on male, female on female, unless it's a male, and then the male and a female can do a strip search in the male, but not on the female because right. more of the abuse right is on women, not on men. Right. Okay. Okay. So while you was in there, well, it don't sound like you was able to take any classes or programs. Oh yes, they yes, have, yes. They have in the man at the time. They have all the classes. Uh, upholstery. Um, uh, you get to work. Um, life skills. They got all the groups, parenting skills for the females. They have. They did have that. And yes, I did take advantage of that. Do you think it helped? I mean, considering you're you're able to take these programs to better yourself when you. Um, re-enter the community, but you're being abused at the same time. So do you think it helped at all? Or do you think it was just something to do the past time? I think it was just something to do the past time. All right, so Ms. Stacy. so you have a wrongful conviction. Can you speak a little bit about that? Well, um, in 2005, because by me being a registered sex offender, mm -hmm. um, after 15 years, you can be removed off of that registry. Oh, and okay. I've already made the 50... 15 years by coming, meeting Vera, coming to this program, I found out that that information. I never knew that. Mm -hmm. So for the 15 years, I've been 15 years charge free. 2015, mm -hmm. I'm working with Vera. I'm supposed to have been, I was supposed to have been removed, but that's when the coronavirus hit. Shut the system down. Once the system shut down, I mean, three days prior, I was at the court date. Mm -hmm. The next day, three days, that Monday, I was supposed to be in the court. I wouldn't be here. I wouldn't be off parole. System shut down from the system. I had to wait from 15, or 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 21, 22, 23. I've been waiting nine years for a wrongful conviction. I was never supposed to be locked up off a of dirty yarn. My probs said it was a dirty yarn. They tried to steal the date. They, if I get convicted, that means I can't get off. Oh. So my professor, he's racist, coming out of North. His name, he coming out of North, racial profile. So he pulled and said it was a dirty one. Never that. With my Megan's Law, it's a first degree, second degree, and fourth degree charge. There's no third degree charge ever. Mm. So what they did, they hit me with a third degree charge. Illegal sentence. Whoa. So Vera, that's where Vera comes in, and we're gonna we're fixing that. So from 2015 to now, I've been fighting this. Today I'm here. This month in September, I will be in front of the judge for illegal sentence. The judge, prosecutor, public defender, and state parole. We have them by the balls. Where literally, where I'm like Vera's, and by being with her, I know all I do is stand, and it's over. So for the criminal justice department, yes, I did a lot of shit. Mm -hmm. And I paid the penalty for my action. Now I'm back in society. Society don't tell me who they think I am. I know who I am. Okay. Okay. But do you feel as though like a lot of people, like they have a background record and a lot of people in places of power, but like, well, you know what? They got a record anyway. We don't give a fuck. Just throw this on them. And do you believe a lot of that's going on? Like throwing charges, trumped up charges. Yes. Because the person already has a background. Yes. yes. So how does that make you feel that knowing that, yes, I know I did some stuff. Yes, I got a background, but shit, don't be putting stuff on me that I haven't did because you feel as though I need to be locked up or still be in this system because you don't like me. Right. Well, I feel about it like that. That happened to me right now. It's going on with me. Either I'm going to give up 
which I did. I did like with my charge. I didn't even want to go through this no more. Mm -hmm. I wanted to just say, okay, I'm just die a registered sex offender. Oh well, I didn't want to fight no more because it took it out of me the discouragement. Oh come on, I done made it to this point now. They tell me, and I just got in for you to say that I'm in Camden County now, mm -hmm. and I just got hit with a, a, a simple assault. So the criminal justice, I got the simple assault. I got this case up here, and I was for, falsely accused. But for six months, I had to go through the court system, and I finally just got that dismissed. So by being in the criminal justice, yes, I felt bad. But guess what? I feel good today because all this stuff that's happening to me from that time, from 35, I'm okay with it now. Okay. okay. I'm good. So did you have any friends and family members be like, oh, you know what, Miss, Miss Stacy, I don't see Miss Stacy on the sex offender registry. Did they talk about it? No. No, don't talk about it? I, not outside my family. It did me, and it bothered me for a long time. I had to learn how to accept that charge. Mm -hmm. I had to accept the charge because if the tables was turned, I would have did the same thing okay. for my child. Okay. But see, karma, like you say, is karma. The guy that I committed the crime to, he's in state prison now doing 30 years because it wasn't true. Mm. He knew it wasn't true, and he still accepted it and allowed that charge to happen to me. So karma is, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah always going to come back around. Yes. Miss Stacy must got some strong-ass ancestors. You don't play it by her. I know, that's right. <laughs> I'm highly, you know what, I got? I'm highly favored and never even knew that. Yeah, I yes, never knew are. I was protected. I never knew. I just had to still go through the bullshit. But today I'm on top. I feel great. And I still go through stuff, but I'm I'm better today. Are you thankful for everything that you've been through in the bullshit to get to where you're at today? Yes. Like, they, like I was in a program, somebody asked me. They asked everybody, if you could change something in your life, what would you do? Nothing. Nothing? I wouldn't do anything. If I can go back in time and God said I can go back, I wouldn't change anything because I wouldn't be the woman I am today. I wouldn't be strong. Everything I went through, I had to. Okay. Real talk. Real okay. talk. Okay. I had to. So when you was incarcerated and when you got out, did your incarceration, did it change the way you think, how you uh, looked at life? Yes, because I'm going I'm to go forward a little bit. Being incarcerated is being incarcerated. When I got it, because like I said, I was still living in a parole house and I didn't catch it. But then I had to go into a program. I went into a program called Promise mm -hmm. because now I'm really wanted. Okay. And being in Promise is locked up, locked up, incarcerated. To me, it's anywhere it's where you can't get out. Mm. If I can't get out, I'm locked in. And that's a mental thing. So that's where I started building myself, started believing in myself, started trusting myself, started trusting God. Listening to her ear, I got to hear her mouth over there. So <laughs> Roya, just listening to the positivity feedback. And then, then Vera hooked me up with paid confinement. Here she comes. Okay, okay then. And that's where I started building. Because if you could do it, I know I could do it. So I'm you sorry. are. Oh, my. No, seriously. Thank you. I looked at you. I looked at you and from fear told me to look at at first oh man, I don't want to hear that. But did you look at it, Stacy? And here I did. So that's when I started building my confidence. Started building up when I seen your pink confinement. Oh, thank you. Thank you. No, really, for real. I really did. I started building up my confidence. I knew I can do this. I knew I can fight this battle and I could win. Yeah, and you can. And you always believe in yourself. You yes. know, you got the people that got your back. And you are no shit. I believe in you, so put your yes. mind to it. Go and do it. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Don't let nobody hold you back. And so how does it feel to be free and to be on your shit, to be confident and uh, all the bullshit aside? How oh does it feel God. to stay sick? It feels so good just to be able to be independent that don't get high. I ain't got high in two years. Oh, okay. I don't get high. All I do is smoke that bud. That's okay. it. But I don't get high off crack. That's nothing. I don't do it. I don't knock you. I don't care. I just feel great. It feels okay. good to be able to pay my bills. It feels good to be able to get my nails done. It feels good to have money in my pocket. Okay. It's good to get one of them t-shirts today. <laughs> okay, then. Okay, then. Okay, then. Yes. So, Miss Stacy. Yes. Do you have any social media that you would like the people to know? 
and they want um, to follow you, and they want to reach out to you. Talk I to want you. y'all to follow um, Corey Renee. Um, she's eight years old. My granddaughter, she is walking the runway. Okay. Tomorrow. Okay. okay. Tomorrow in Sickleville. Look it up. Okay. Follow yeah. her. Okay. And everybody, y'all need to follow Pink Confinement because <laughs> she is the pink and pretty. Okay. We got peepees. <laughs> yeah. All right. So what message do you want to leave today for the people that's watching you, Miss Stacy? Um, believe in yourself and trust God. Okay. That's what I say. Trust God and always. Okay. Okay. All um, right. Yes. And there you have it. Another episode on Pink Confinement. Miss Stacy. Yay! I'm in with Pink. <laughs> pink your five oh, minutes. Yes. Pink. Yes. I know with Miss Stacy in New Stacey. Jersey. Yeah, yes. What, what did you think when you walked through the door? I was think? nervous at first, but I always follow y'all. So I already knew that I was coming to see Pink Confinement. <laughs> yes. God is good. Yes. I will follow y'all. Love y'all. Positive. Okay. Strong. No. Strong, positive. <laughs> A role model. If she can do it, we can do it. Absolutely. For yes. sure, for sure. Anything you want to let the people know about old Pink? Oh, y'all need to follow Pink Confinement <laughs> and stay in tune because she's coming across the state. She come across state lines. Ladies, be prepared for Pink Confinement and keep an open mind because she is coming with some real talk. Uncut, raw, and uncut. Okay. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I love y'all.